Rock, I know you've loved roster moves. It gives you a little extra yes. meat in your sandwich for the day. <laughs> exactly. I think we all saw this coming. I know Aaron Hicks saw coming. The Orioles, they just both ran out of time is what happened. I talked with Hicks yesterday, and he was describing what was going on with the back. He said, you know, he wakes up in the morning, he feels great. A lot better than I usually do when I wake <laughs> up. He can move around, feels great. He says, as soon as he starts to swing, tries to hit, that's when the back feels like it wants to shut down, which is a problem when you hit a baseball for a living. So when I asked him, do you think you can avoid the injured list, he, he didn't sound that hopeful. He said, you know, the days are dwindling. They're running out of days. And he goes, if I can't help this team win, they're going to have to bring in somebody who can. So I thought, okay, that's a strong hit. So I checked Norfolk's box score last night. Colton Kowser hit his 11th home run. Ryan McKenna did not play. Oh. He was on a flight here. He said he boarded a 7 p.m. flight through Salt Lake. He got here. Now, we don't know how long Hicks is going to be out. Brandon Hyde said that you know, he could be shut down for a couple weeks. But they just ran out of time. And I think also Anthony Santander's situation. Yeah had a factor in. He was removed last night for, get this, back soreness. There's a lot of that going around. He's day to day. He's not in the lineup tonight. So if you had two outfielders down, short bench, that wasn't going to work. So that's why I got McKenney here. Santander, maybe he's available tonight, maybe tomorrow. But this has been something he's been dealing with for most of the season. He had the big game in Atlanta. We were waiting to get him in his locker afterward. And it took forever because he was getting treatment on his back. So we don't know really how long he's going to be out. So they really were forced into making this move. Well, and you know, too, that this is so tough when you have these long West Coast flights. That doesn't really yeah. help that one particular situation. Uh, and, and you mentioning Santander, you love to see a guy like McKenna come back up right. here. He doesn't have to take any time to get readjusted to being with these guys. But on the other side of things, a move coming. Michael Givens ultimately granted his release. Yeah. But Dylan Tate, you know, the Orioles haven't had him in a while. They're looking for guys like D.L. Yeah. Hall. You know someone is going to end up coming up for an arm for this year. Yeah, and who knows? It could end up being Hall. The question is, will it be September expanded rosters and you can add two players but only one pitcher? Or could we see him before that? Because, you know, he's pitched five games in Norfolk now, and I've got the numbers handy right here. Two runs, three hits, two walks, 15 strikeouts in six and two-third innings. He struck out the side last night. He's done with the D-load, which DL also stands for D-load. Oh, interesting. And went down, <laughs> you know, to uh, Sarasota. He was building strength back because he had the short and spring training. Definitely back in a relief role. Remember when they were going to stretch him out and they keep saying we want to develop him as a starter? They still do. But for now, again, he is a reliever. They'll try again next spring. And he's a guy that could be that power arm back into the bullpen for an inning or two. So I wonder, we're going to see him. It's just a question of when. But he's got his velocity back. He's been very impressive. It's just interesting that we assume Michael Gibbons is going to be a key part of this bullpen. Yeah. Durable guy, the reunion. Six appearances, four ineffective innings. He's gone. Tate has not pitched all year. And at this point, he's doing some throwing in Sarasota. But he's not ready to go on a rehab assignment. So if you get anything out of Dylan Tate in 2023, that's a pretty big deal. Keegan Aiken, remember him? He pitched once in the Florida Complex League, once at Norfolk. He shut down again because of, get this, his back. It's contagious, apparently. <laughs> so not... he shut down. We don't know when he's going to be pitching again. Maybe Austin Voth. He's in Norfolk, rehab assignment. He threw three scoreless recently, so maybe we end up seeing him. But Dale Hall might be the key guy of everybody we're talking about. When, when you look at a playoff situation, we've talked about guys like Jack Flaherty, Kyle Gibson that have had that experience to you where is that biggest punch for all of these guys who are trying to work their way back for this season in particular? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the veteran relievers here, you would think they're, you know, they want to be able to contribute, but also it's like, you know, you're going to think about your future as well. Is there going to be a role for them next year? It's very important, I think, to have some of that playoff experience. The Orioles have downplayed it quite a bit because they don't have a lot of guys with playoff experience, but I think it helps to have some guys that have been through that before. And also just to have any veterans, because it is a very young roster. Still at this point, they like to have some of those guys back. But I feel like, you know, for the bullpen, certainly if they could get a guy like Tate that was such a big contributor to them last year, that would help them right now. They've got guys who are surpassing their innings limits. You got a guy who hasn't thrown any innings, that would be helpful. But uh, they may still have to go with some youth there, but I think it's going to be very helpful to have a guy, to have a, a, a Flaherty, to have a Gibson, because we're just making the bold assumption this team will be in the playoffs. I keep saying that as if I might jinx it. But to have some of that experience, and even have a John Means when he comes back, even if it's a bullpen role, we don't know, but just somebody who's more of a veteran-type guy. Well, you just led me to the next one, so I'm going to throw this one at you now. But I think you'll be ready for it with John Means. Yeah. Watching his rehab appearances, he's got another one in Bowie tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Where do you see him kind of angling in? If 
you're going to put on the Elias cap for this one, does he work back through the bullpen, or is this somehow finding another way to squeeze into this rotation that's already at a six-man? Yeah, I think as far as they can build up his pitch count, stretch him out, he obviously would rather start. That's what he's used to more than anything. Is there a need in the rotation? They've got six starters now. Is he more valuable to them in the bullpen? Did they start him out there, and if they went ahead and move him in, maybe they can swap out some of these guys. I think at this point they just want to get a guy who was an all-star and threw a no-hitter back on their pitching staff and back in uniform, and they'll figure it out. He was extended from 28 to 45 pitches his last outing. The numbers weren't great at the end, but the fact that he got up to 45 pitches is what was important. They removed him. I think he had a full count on a hitter, but it was he was fine. They just, that's it, 45 are capping it. So they'll just keep pushing him and pushing him, and then beginning of September, at some point early September, they say they want to bring him back, and I think they'll kind of then survey where they are with that staff do we need him in the rotation? Is he ready? Is he built up enough? Or is it more bullpen for now? And they could maybe switch him. Okay, so out of the pitching side of things, on the position player side, you, you talk about that extra call-up in September that they're going to get. Joey Ortiz has had a lot of time. Colton Kowser, Kyle Stowers, somebody we haven't heard from in a hot minute. Right. Fans are clamoring for Jackson Holiday, who has not even turned 20 years old right. yet. But how do you see a fit for the Orioles, especially when you factor in they've already got flexibility, guys like O'Hearn and Frazier, right. who can play the in and outfield? Right. I mean, he's so young, he still says, and a half when he gives his age. And a half. And a half, 19 and a half. I mean, I know I had a friend text me again this morning predicting he's coming up, other teams are doing <laughs> it, and it would help contract. I, I just know he's a 19-year-old kid who started out in Delmarva. I don't know if he's going to make that jump. I don't. You don't necessarily need him right now. I mean, you, I think his pitching is what they're really looking at at this point. But there are other places they could go. And you're right. You look at a Kowser, a Kerstad even, or an Ortiz. Exactly. I just, I don't see it, but I've learned never say never. Because then it's going to happen, and this is going to be replayed over and over. So I'm not going to say no. I just feel like at this point they're going to look and say, okay, what, what, what do they need more? It'd be nice to have a speed guy coming off the bench, but that's where they have Jorge Mateo mm -hmm. could be that guy. So, yeah. you know, do they need another outfielder? They don't need, necessarily need Jackson Holiday, but I know it's intriguing. It's something that would excite fans, and he's a toolsy guy. Bring him off the bench. I don't know. Somebody goes, you know, he could be like Urias. I'm like, well, they have Urias. <laughs> I don't, and he plays more position. So I'm still saying no to Jackson Holiday, but I reserve the right to apologize you later. You do. Well, and that's why you write from the top. Right. All right. Well, we'll let you get out of here and All you right. can start writing on that rock. Thanks as always for Thank joining you. us.